this is Granny Maggie from Granny Magic, professor of Earth Magic at Dead University. As always, honoring your magic. Somebody sent me a really good question today. This person wanted to know, as far as ancestors, who counts? What about really good friends? Where do they fall in the afterlife? Well, there are terms that we use. Ancestors usually are people who were related to you by blood, by DNA. They're very close to you because you're continuing on their line in a sense. They can so easily identify you're carrying their DNA. I think it's something in the modern world we tend to want to overlook or dismiss, but hereditary ancestors are very close to you, whether you know them or have met them or not, and they're always available to you. There's another term called beloved dead, and beloved dead, some people use that for even family members who are more recently deceased, family members that you knew, family members you know stories about or names of, and they think of ancestors as being dead who are much further back. Another way to use beloved dead is with friends, people you were emotionally, spiritually, energetically very aligned with in this life. Yes, those people do contact us. Those people are around us after they pass away. The beloved dead are significant to a lot of people just because they have that real alignment, that sense of strong spiritual connection with the beloved dead. So yes, you certainly will be able to contact that energy, especially now as the veil thins. Another term that people use is they think of, I hope I say this right, archetypal ancestors. And, and these are your teachers. These are people uh, who taught you. These are historic figures maybe you didn't know personally or weren't related to, but they represent certain ideals and ideas and energies that you feel so closely aligned with. Yes, that kind of ancestor can be honored. That kind of ancestor's energy can be contacted. You know, that archetypal kind of relationship that you have with those people. Very meaningful to a lot of people. So be broad-minded when I post something about ancestors or somebody else does. Read the text. Think about the situation, the context. Would that still apply to somebody who was a friend of yours, a deeply beloved friend? Well, then go ahead and feel like you can use that chant or that ritual or adapt it in some way so that it fits this friendship that you had. You can also do the same if it's somebody from long ago that you've never met and not related to who symbolizes this certain kind of ideal or energy for you. It's all about looking at what people put out there and adapting language, adapting rituals. Everything that you read can be personalized. So I hope that clears that question up a little bit. And thank you for the question.